Hey everybody, welcome back to Gooseberry Homestead. So let's go take a look and see how things are doing in the garden. We'll just walk around and just see how everything is looking. Um, I've moved some things around, um, like some patio chairs, some camping chairs, tables, what have you. Um, this is one of my favorite spots in the yard to sit during the summertime. And I get to sit right next to all the raspberries and the blackberries and boysenberries and what have you. But it is seeming like that one um, berry bush that's on the end down here, the in the black, tall black um, <clears throat> pot right here. These do appear to be raspberries. So I'm actually going to be on the lookout to see if these tons and tons of berry that are shooting up the um the canes the raspberry canes that are shooting up i have a feeling these might be the double gold raspberries we'll be keeping an eye on them they could possibly actually put on fruit um here soon or uh close to august possibly so i'll let you guys know if something changes on that still planning on having a plant sell at some point um, not sure when. Um, I'm probably going to be just selling them for relatively cheap. Um, kind of like a yard sell type thing. I think I forgot to take my allergy pill, so I apologize for you hearing me sniff like that. So, um, all of the fruit trees are looking good. Um and the soapworts in full bloom. I did move all of the little trees that were along the cinder blocks. I moved them over here in between my other trees to have them all really close. That also cuts down on the amount of watering I have to do. And um, anything that doesn't hit the pot actually will hit the, the small pots in between. So I get um, more watering done in a lot quicker time frame, which is really good. So, and I just moved the tomatoes right here so I could look at them. <laughs> the tomatoes are getting huge on them already, which is really, really exciting because last year I didn't have tomatoes until, um, I'm wanting to say <clears throat> maybe July and they weren't very big. They did not get very big last year. So I'm really encouraged by buying these plants that were well established um, last month. So I'm really happy about that. So everything's looking good. A lot of my um, mustard has gone to seed and arugulas have gone to seed. Um, the things I've noticed about the arugulas though is that even after they go to seed, they will continue making leaves on the arugula. I'm wondering if it's kind of like a kale you know, because kale can go to seed and you can still harvest from it later. So I'm wondering, <clears throat> my wild arugula is like that. And you guys have seen that before. So continue on. Everything's looking good. Um, my cherry trees are looking good here next to the house. The, the one that I grew from seed is this one right here. It's really... Um, taken off this year so I'm really really excited nothing happened in here really looks like the kids broke the handle with something maybe they ran the bike into the side of the pot it's on the ground there's a little piece of plastic on the ground down there but um, I have some sweet potatoes in there so we'll see I don't know they're probably rotting I'll have to try those again another another year um, I didn't do the slips and that sort of thing so uh, Maybe in the future with a little bit more practice, I'll get better at that. Everything's looking good here. I do have my coffee in my hand, so I'm not pointing things out today, really. Um, so, yeah. So, everything's looking pretty good. I got the cover on this. Let me set my coffee down on our dirty... It's getting pollen all over it now. I want to take the lid off of this. I keep the lid on this just in case the crows like to mess with my stuff sometimes just just to protect these so these came up in my um, pot with my uh, Crandall current the other one died that looked like this it got fried in the greenhouse before I moved it over here 
and I hope that it might make a comeback. This one made a comeback, so it's still growing, it's still alive. I've transplanted some things. It looks like a a seed surfaced here. I think this is a dogwood, like a cherry dogwood, the ones that make the berries. Um, and then a couple question marks uh, squashes. They definitely are two different varieties. One's probably this one looks like it might be a cucumber. So. I didn't know what the seeds went to or where they were from because they came from when the greenhouse flipped. Um, it doesn't look like the corn ever sprouted, so the ones that the rats didn't get to doesn't look like they sprouted. I've got little seedlings that have popped up in here of the really pretty, um, the two different pretty, uh, oh, um violas so I can't wait for those some of them are really ruffly the other one is the coconut swirl grab my coffee again it's like completely full and I always walk around with it and don't drink it until after I'm done with the video most of the time only because I can't handle hot hot liquid so I pretty much brutalized all of my apricot trees that I grew from seed but I was having some issues because the drain holes um, there was no drain holes on the bottom of this pot here, so I had to use my, um, my, uh, husband's drill to drill some holes. Now, I think the bottom section does come off of it, but, uh, yeah, and the aphids got onto it. So this is how my apricot tree is looking now. It's got a new main leader, and I'm praying that... It doesn't wilt like some of the other branches were doing when it wasn't um, draining well. So now I'm just hoping that it's good um, and everything's looking good so far. So we'll just keep an eye on it. Um, I got some random things over here in this section. Some flowers and berries and um, that sort of thing. And um, gooseberries. Now, I got all the aphids off of them now. It took a good two weeks for um, that uh, neem oil soil drenching to actually work and like constantly spraying the leaves off with water and neem oil off and on. I think I actually only ended up doing two treatments of neem oil on the actual branches and that sort of thing. But now that the aphids off, it has put, they, they're putting on shoots now that the aphids are off of them. And so they're growing new shoots. So that's how they're looking. Looking pretty good. Um, all my herbs are looking pretty good. Um, my strawberry containers I will eventually have filled in with strawberries completely. But this year I have a little extra space. So before they start creating runners and that sort of thing, um, I'm growing other things in with them. I've got beets, kohlrabi. Um, Swiss chard and the Swiss chard has gone to seed I'm going to let it go to seed and I will collect the seeds to plant again um, my oregano or no this is my time it's doing really good the one on the far right on the very end over here that was a salad burnet love that stuff so it's kind of mine kind of was bitter after it came out of the winter so I'm waiting for summer to help sweeten it up maybe. I might need to just cut the leaves, most of the leaves off and then let it put on some new leaves. So I did trim the tops of my uh, German thyme that's on this side and um, just trying to increase the, um, the bushiness of the, um, the thyme so they'll bush out. I did the same thing on this time right here. I've got a small patch. These are my lemon thyme, so I need to grow the lemon thyme. Eventually, I'll have this whole section on this side filled in with lemon thyme on one side and German thyme on the other side. And I got some random things planted, some beets in some of the big sections. So, it, the blank sections, I guess you could say. But all my gooseberries are looking really good. The spittle bugs are back but not as bad as they were last year. So I'll, whenever I see the spittle bug um, egg spit or whatever it is, it basically cocoons a little, a little spittle bug. 
in it and I've seen them when I've um, touched them with my hands this year last year I was too afraid to touch the um, it's spit I guess you could say <laughs> and this year I touched it and it kind of feels like snot actually um, <laughs> But, I mean, it's, it, then, then it goes away. So, just the initial touching it. And then, um, so yeah. So, I actually saw the little bug inside of it this year. And it was actually kind of neat. Um, so, yeah. Okay, down here, looking good. I've got my Russian olive trees, which are getting bigger. I've got three of them in this container, which I will leave them in this container together. For the um, duration of their life here on this homestead. And then when we finally get to wherever we're going, I'll plant them someplace far away from the house because they can be invasive. So, um, or I'll keep them in a container pot on a concrete slab or something where they can't um, drop their fruit onto the ground to get um, established. So we'll just have to wait and see. Um, my goji berry is here. Uh, it still has not put on any flowers. It's the third year. Um, no flowers so far. Let's see if I can get a better view of it. I'm spilling coffee on myself. So the sun's high in the sky right now. It's about noon. So um, yeah, so sometimes it's hard to get a good view. Um, so that's how the goji berry's looking or the goji berry plant. I've got three little plants. I got two small ones down here and then um, some coming up from the root area. So I'm excited about it. Looks good. My roses of Sharon are looking really nice. I did lose the one from the, um, the storm so I do need to shelter my roses of Sharon a little bit more. So when winter comes <clears throat> I'll probably be moving the greenhouse up closer to the house here and um, and that way I can have um, my items in the greenhouse that don't really need, they just need to be protected a little bit from the weather and so and my greenhouse just won't hold up another winter not with snow that is all right so let's see everything is looking good the tomatoes in this little red pot are doing amazing and they're getting really big they're actually almost ready to transplant into the um the garden in the back which i'll show you in a minute and um so yeah these ones are doing good and they were all planted the same time as the other ones in here and some of these are starting to take off a little bit more in here so um but a lot of them are still relatively small set my coffee down and we'll see how everything's looking inside of here. And the bug is trying to kill me. So these are sweetie. These are the, um, those pumpkins. The sugar pie pumpkins. And then I planted some flowers over on these sides. It does look like, um, some of the... Um, seeds have uh, are getting ready to split so I've got lavender and I can't remember the other one I've got a video though that tells me what they are so two different kinds of flowers and then in here you guys we do have germination happening I feel like I might need to move these down so that they don't um, get uh, wilted and that one's all right. So the um, black goji berries are coming up. My bok choy is hating being inside of here. It's all falling over. I might need to replant those again and maybe direct sow them right into a, um, a container, maybe along the fence or something. But yeah, I do have sprouts everywhere for the, um, the black goji berries. So that's really, really awesome. And I planted these on May 3rd. So about a two week time frame you guys and you start seeing something. This one is the tamarillo in this section here. Nothing yet. So I'm going to move these down in a few minutes. And maybe transplant some of the bok choy that, the one bok choy that's still going okay. But everything for the most part you guys is looking really good in the greenhouse. I planted some morning glories and an, uh, I think it's cypress. 
I can't remember. It's a, a type of flower. Um, looks like little stars, really pretty. I, and they're climbers, so we're going to plant it along the, um, the fence line over here. So I already had some that had split open and germinated in the water overnight. So I'm planting them for my husband because he loves morning glories. So there's that. All the berries are looking good. We have so many blueberries this year. It's amazing. I moved my gooseberries out right there. I have about a total of 30 of those gooseberries. So I'm going to need to get about 30 pots and some soil so that I can um, pot them into some soil and uh, have them in a bigger container. So yeah. At least a gallon size is what I'm thinking. So everything's looking good here. Um, oh, my kohlrabi is doing amazing in that pot right there. That's probably the biggest ones I have of the purple. So I'm kind of thinking the container gardening is actually not so bad for the kohlrabi. So we'll keep an eye on all of that. I've got tons of berries forming now on the strawberries on the chairs. The little pears are doing good down there on the ground. So I've got a lot of strawberries over here. Let's see. Um, I can't really tell if they're the pine berries or the red berries because they're all mixed. So they're pine berries and red berries down there. I planted whorehound here because I found seeds at a local um, nursery. And then I've got my hot and spicy oregano here. So it's all looking good. So a little spot of that. And so everything's looking good. Looks like I got another really good pot of um, the purple kohlrabi that's just doing phenomenal. Um, so yeah, some of them are doing better than others. I've got the pot, one pot down here. This is the white kohlrabi. So some of the pots are doing way better than others, which really is amazing to me because they were all planted at the same time. I got some bugs munching on them a little bit. Grow, baby, grow. That's all I can say. A lot of hot and spicy oregano plants down in the moss. Looking good. Looking good. All right. I'm probably going to plant that in the yard here somewhere. Um, maybe back here next to the um, comfrey. All right. Coming back here, you guys. Oh, really? A fly just flew into my coffee. Just bear with me, you guys. I got to get him out. I gotta get him out. Okay, I'm gonna... There, I poured him out. Okay. Um, maybe he's still alive. He might live, you guys. He might live. Oh, that was gross. But I'm Scottish, so... Get out of my coffee, you wee little booger. I'm still gonna drink it. <laughs> okay, so my comfrey's looking good. I got it planted in the ground this year. But I have little bits of it popping up in different areas. Alright, better drink this coffee. <laughs> that was like a fluke thing, you guys. All right. So my kohlrabi and my beets look like they're doing pretty darn good back here now. I've been keeping the ground pretty moist, encouraging growth. So I'm going to continue to do that. But I did plant some things out into the um, the garden last night. And since we had, were having such cool temperatures, I decided it was prime time to do it. Now, so far, so good. I went ahead and planted high density. I guess this is my idea of high density. Um, I can still walk into this area. I have a feeling that these are more like pumpkins. So they're going to vine out on the ground. So these are the carnival squashes. I don't think they're a climber. I have no clue, you guys. So I planted them like this. So I planted about 12 of them. I still have a small handful of them. Um, that I can take to the church community um, uh, garden, which I think I might have missed the planting date because of my husband's military drills, but um, I'll have to get in contact with them on that. And But I have some extras to plant over there, which is really good. So um, I will be hoping for the best at saying big prayers over my garden because we do have... Um, rabbits in the area that squeeze their little behinds through the fences 
and that sort of thing. So I want to be able to protect them. And as you can see, it's noon and they're, they've got pr a pretty much a good amount of sunlight. So they get a good amount of sunlight for the majority of the day. And then in the heat of the day, they get shaded. So I'm thinking it might be good. It might be good. Then right here, I planted my my trailing ones. So I've got the zucchini that has the stripes right in this section right here. Then in th this section right here, I have the zucchini that has the little small round zucchinis. And I put them on the end for the reason that they're close to the chain link fence. So what I'm thinking about doing is after they get to a certain height, you guys, I can like train them over to the fence so they can climb up the fence. So that's the idea of planting them on the end. And then I'm going to be putting all of my tomatoes, you guys, all along the fence line over here. And I'm probably going to have two rows of tomatoes. I'm going to try to plant them as close as I possibly can to each other um, without crowding them too much. And then I'm going to also have my bell peppers back here and my, um, my, um, all my hot peppers and that sort of thing too. I'm going to have a ton of leftovers. So I'll have a lot of stuff that I can take to the community garden as well. And uh, hopefully, um, uh, everything will work out good. I did end up with two, um, uh, little watermelon plants so I am thinking I will plant one right in this section on the ground um, kind of where the dirt is right there where it's pulled on the top of the um, the shade cloth in this section right here just a little bit of ways kind of kind of about kind of about here right in the center and then the same on this one here and I'll put both of those um, watermelon plants right here so they will still get plenty of sunlight during the summer months and at the same time they'll have some shade too not that they really need any shade at all but um, beings as I really want my tomatoes and stuff to be over along this section over here and my peppers next to that so that is the idea that I'm going for and then my eggplants I'm thinking about getting those salad bowls like I had talked about before and planting my eggplants in the center of those salad bowls so I have at least eight salad bowls that I need to get from the dollar store so um and then some soil to plant into so we're think so what well, that's what I'm thinking about doing and I still have a little bit of time because the plants are still kind of small so I will be planting some some of the um tomatoes <laughs> I couldn't think of the word <laughs> some of the tomatoes back here um, this week and I'm waiting till the evening we have kind of a, a couple cool days this week so um, I thought it was perfect time for me to transplant these um, squashes and um, summer squashes out so that's how they're looking so it looks like I've got zucchinis and then the cucumber munchers I'm thinking about putting them over on the other side of the yard and putting them into the areas where the soybeans did not come up and that way they can grab hold of the the chain link fence on that side and they get plenty of um, sunlight over there and I might even put some of the zucchinis over on that side too because um, I do have quite a few of those coming up now that the rats didn't get everything things are starting to pop up in the containers which is really great now my parsley is looking good um, the garlic right here is looking really good I do have some uh, onions that I put down in there because my uh, friend gave me some of her extra sets and um, they were all kind of dried out and not looking so hot so not all of them are doing that great but a few of them are so I've got onions on this side and I got onions planted in my cinder blocks over there too so I don't really care about the onions so much because onions are relatively cheap at the store. So um, yeah, I'm looking to plant the cucumbers over along the other side a little bit more. And some of the beans have come up. So we'll run over there really quick. 
So that's how everything's looking back there. Then I did the garden planting yesterday. I need to have the boys come out here and pick up all of the limbs from the branches and put their sticks away when they're done playing with them in the yard. Um, so let's see. Lebanon cedar is looking good. I'll show you guys that really quick before we go. Looking amazing. It's grown at least two inches. I'll do another separate video on that. This is the apricot tree. Now it's pretty much dead. I cut it down uh, because I had a lot of die off on it. A lot of the branches were dying. So, um, but I've got artichokes planted in there. Um, let's see. So everything's looking good. We've already looked over here at these guys. But over here is where I have, where I'm talking about putting the cucumbers and stuff. I did plant some pumpkin seeds over here. So we'll be watching to see if any of those are coming up. I've got arugula coming up in different areas of the yard. So I've got some right here coming up right there. That's crazy. So yeah. Um, and some of the onions are doing better than other areas. But I did plant some some pumpkin seeds down in here so I've got different kinds and then I've got some beans that came up they're not doing so hot so we'll just have to watch those and see see how well they do and then down on this other end I had planted um, the soybeans all the way down so far nothing so we'll just plant some cucumbers in here along with the the, the onions and some of the onions are doing way better than others. So, but that's pretty much it, you guys. Thanks for watching. And comment, like, and subscribe. Click that bell button. And as always, you guys, have a wonderful day. And God bless. Bye.